have signs. Technically, it went wrong at the end, and the mic didn't work perfectly. Wonderful. Uh, I'm a Robert Ince. I do things about science on Radio 4 and that kind of thing. And uh, I have never been happier in my life that I made the decision not to do a PhD than when <laughs> I saw this film. And uh, we, I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, with, uh, we have with us uh, the director and the star. Please welcome Jorge Chan and Alex Lockwood. Now, one of the things I, I start off, and by the way, I should say they're very jet lagged as well. They've just got over. Both of them were sleeping under coats till about five minutes ago. Um, one, one of the things uh, Dara Brin, uh, uh, an Irish comic, once said to me, because I do shows popularising science, and he went, "You're making science look fun, and you are. People are going to end up studying science and in 20 years' time. They're going to say I did that thing because I saw a show that was fun about it." I am furious. In some ways, I think this film is a great antidote to that. Uh, I mean, this is how much of this is true of your. Where, is there a fiction and a reality blurring line, or basically is pretty much all of that the combined experience of the PhD world? Uh, no, yeah, I've always seen it as my mission to discourage people from. <laughs> no, I've always seen it as my mission to to. To, to make people laugh. And so um, the guy who draws uh, Calvin and Hobbes, Bill Watterson, once said, uh, you know, nothing is more uh, funnier than, uh, well, no, I'm sorry, he said, surprise is the element of humor, and nothing's more surprising than the truth. So I always just kind of try to find these kernels of truth in, in their interactions with professors and students and just put it out there so that people can laugh. And, you know, um, yeah, it has had that effect, I think, on some people. Uh, but I think for, for every uh, person that tells me, like, oh, thank God I read your comics before I make my decision, I usually get someone saying, like, oh, I'm glad I read your comics. It made it seem, you know, human, or it made it seem um, interesting or, or fun. And, and, and that's why they went to grad school. I mean, I, I have to say, in the end, even though I sound negative, I, in the end, I think it does have, you know, it says, yeah, it is kind of worth it. It's just there is agony. Um, you, I mean, that's what I wondered about the strip. When you started doing the strip, did you, did you see it as a kind of coping mechanism for what you were going through? Or was it a cry for help? Or was it just, hey, this is, a, you know, this is fun and you're surprised by the number of people who went, wow, this is really speaking to me. This is, this is my life too. Um, yeah, no, it was a cry. It was a cry. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I, I think uh, mostly I was motivated by um, procrastination. <laughs> so I, uh, I started in grad school, and so you asked me if it was biographical, and, and it was for the main character. So I, I didn't have any funding going to grad school. I really had to knock on doors and get professors to remember your name. Uh, and so it was, uh, I was sort of going through all this, and I saw other people going through it too, and I saw that I had, um, I had some friends through, friends through friends who were in anthropology and economics and planetary science, and they were all going through the same thing. And I just thought it was something really that you that hadn't been done before, you know, there were all these stories that hadn't been told before about this kind of experience. And I, yeah, I think I just kind of wanted to procrastinate. Well, that, that's what I found interesting. Alex, you're still doing your PhD in planetary science. This was kind of, was this your holiday break then? Um, this was my weekends for about three months. And was there a, is there what for you in, in, in the film, is, is there one particular scene where you go, oh man, thank heavens that, I've just got rid of that by performing that scene, that has been too much of my life? <laughs> well, um, I live with undergrads, <laughs> so I haven't gotten rid of it, but um, it's very true. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten rid of it, um, no. <laughs> oh, man, this was, yeah, this was meant to be the band-aid, yeah, no, that's all still my life. And, um, but making the movie made it better, because um, I got to leave lab this week. <laughs> See, now, this is, I, I wondered that you've got, you, you four years into doing planetary science. Uh, is there a little side of you that goes, hey, maybe if this goes big, I can leave this, I can become an actress, I can forget all of that world, <laughs> this could be my escape route. Or, uh, underneath it all, is that planetary science is something that you really, you know, you are absolutely wedded to? Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit no, what, 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 what,
what, what, basically, um, what do you want to do with your life, Ellie? <laughs> in five minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, there, there's a moment in the movie that was like super true for me when we were filming this last spring. Um, the movie when Cecilia is talking to Tejo, and she's saying, you know, how do you keep it all together? Um, and it's it's about keeping your passion. And so I think right now, you know, I really enjoyed this, and I also, you know, have a, a passion for for learning and for you know, creating new knowledge through research, um, and specifically uh, planetary science, astronomy. Um, but you have to figure out, you know, what passion drives you the most. So uh, I'm trying to, to navigate that now. Uh, I have no current intentions of leaving my PhD. But, uh, you know, if I got money, maybe that would <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of the maybe some producer bit, that's all I was saying. Oh, yeah, just yeah. The, uh, now, the, at what point did the strip, did you start to get a lot of feedback on it? At what point did, did people start getting in contact with you and how much, how many of the strips are actually, after did you run out of your own experience and go, oh, this is fantastic? I have hundreds of people who go, you've got to write about this. This has to be illuminated. Uh, yeah, so I, um, it's been really kind of a gradual, I guess. From the beginning, I put it up on the website and, you know, at first it was 200 people visiting and now it's, um, you know, a few million people. And, so it's been really, it hasn't been like this big moment where, where it kind of blew up. But, uh, so people from the beginning would write in and say, oh my god, you're writing about this. And, oh, you should, um, uh, you think that advisor is bad. You should hear what my advisor said to me. <laughs> and so I'm like, really? Let me write that down. <laughs> was, was there any moment when you were putting the film together, was there anything you thought, you know what, I can't put that in. People just won't believe that. That is too ridiculous. Was there any kind of self-censorship? Uh, there was a little bit of censorship um, in the uh, squash game. <laughs> so the ori original script called for more compromising stretching positions. <laughs> <laughs> but when we were there with the camera, like, we just, we can't do that. <laughs> Actually, I, in that scene, that's, I did think you were, you were overly coy. I thought, what would John Waters have done? Yeah. He would have gone a lot further. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah. Uh, just have a look of a man exasperated as he looks down at his professor's shorts. I'll take some questions from you. How many of you, by the way, are currently in, in the midst of PhDs? Just out of... Whoa. And how many of you watched that film and went, oh, that's so true? <laughs> Excellent. You have created true art that has reflected these people's world. Um, hey, thank like you for calling it art. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you see, that's really, sometimes that's an insult, isn't it? If you called my science art. Um, let's, let's take some questions. Here. Put your hand up. Who, who have we got? Have we got anyone for me? Uh, I just wanted to tell me about the casting process. <laughs> you are so dead now. You are so dead now. You have read too much into that, both of you, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are you interested in doing some, are you looking for a way out also? <laughs> Yeah, uh, what's your, uh, send me your headshot. Was it your friends or did you know that? No, we searched the entire globe for the best possible actress <laughs> and people who could portray the characters. And, and luckily, thankfully, we found Alex. <laughs> So it wasn't That's a not actually how it happened at all, actually. No. Uh, well, kind of. We, we, I had the idea to do... So everything in the movie, if you haven't heard, um, was filmed with real grad students, real uh, professors were in the movie, postdocs, uh, scientists, undergrads. Uh, they were all actual students at Caltech. So I worked at Caltech for a while, and uh, I wanted to do the movie there. And uh, yes, yeah, so we had a big casting call on campus, and do you want to tell them how... Yeah, we just... Uh... We sat in front of a camera uh, talking to Jorge, and uh, he sort of was looking for like who fits the character and who like doesn't s stutter like me. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have no idea how that works. So basically, are you available on the 14th and 15th? Yes, I am. You would be the leading lady. <laughs> we actually cast one year ago today, exactly. Oh, really? so the whole yeah. thing has been turned around in, in, in the space of a year? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, Did you find um, that there's some wonderful scenes of people, for you, I, I mentioned beforehand, yeah, but I don't want to talk about existential angst when we're talking about science, but the people caught in very repetitive 
that, where they, that, that question about why am I doing this with this machine? What is the point? Uh, I mean, in planetary science, uh, have you had that experience where you go, why am I doing this? Uh, planet science, I thought this was going to be really glamorous, and now, you know, have, have you found yourself facing some machine or other and going, this is not what I'd imagined? Yeah, I think, I mean, we all focus down so narrowly into our field that it's hard to keep your head out of, uh, out of the water and, and seeing the big picture. So, um, yeah, I mean, we all... We all feel like monkeys, and we are <laughs> monkeys, and, uh... Not in some states of the, of the U.S. There's been some amendments brought in where there's some debate on certain theories. You have to get NIH um, approval before. Just remember, it's just a theory, that's all. Um, <laughs> if you'd shown this to your professors, your PhD advisors, and what they thought about it? Um, yeah, Alex, what did your professor think? Um, my professor was way more excited than I was. <laughs> um, no, yeah, he, uh, he came. Uh, I didn't tell him I was doing it uh, for a while. Um, <laughs> but his wife is really nosy on Facebook. <laughs> um, so then I had to tell him. And uh, then he was, he was excited, uh, as long as I still got my work done. <laughs> Have you had people say, uh, oh, I've seen the film, that's based on me? Because Terry Jones, I, I interviewed Terry Jones from Monty Python uh, a few weeks ago, and he said, I had this guy come up to me who I was at university with, and he went, oh, I know what you did. And he went on and on about the fact that you based that character on me. Everyone knows. And he thought, I don't even remember you. <laughs> obviously, everyone in the common room thinks that this is based on So if I say no, everyone goes, nah. So he had to tell you, yes. I based it entirely on you, whoever you are. Um, <laughs> have you had people who kind of said, you know, characters that you, that you, you interact with in the film or, or characters you've created, people who believe that, ah, that must be me? Yes. <laughs> and have you had any ramifications? Whoever they are. <laughs> whoever. Um, no, yeah, a lot of the characters in the comics are based on people that, you know, I was working with. Or, I don't even bother to change the names. <laughs> oh, so you haven't played any, any kind of enigmatic game? Yeah, no, there's no doubt. There's like, there's like Mike, there's Sean, there's Allison. Those are all real, real, real counterparts, yeah. Yeah. That's where science and art meet. Art would have had to change the names as well. So I had to go, no, let's not waste time. <laughs> well, we're getting there. Feynman, I mean, is very iconic to me as, as one of the kind of good, the great science, popular scientists, some of the people really admire, and he's also a Nobel Prize winner, and he's sometimes comprehensible, not always, but sometimes. Um, do, is he still an, an icon, do you think? It, I mean, amongst PhD students, is, is Feynman, though, I don't want to use the word godhead, because that may well be misconstrued, and replace some kind of idol, but I mean, is that why you placed him at the beginning? I don't know what I took away from you putting him at the beginning of the movie, which is obviously not true, but um, was that he. You know, he's, a, he's a, someone that a layperson knows and also someone a scientist knows. And he had, you know, a life that was more interesting than just science, but he was also a genius. And it's kind of like, as PhDs, we're not just scientists and we're not like the nerds on the Big Bang Theory. We're also people and we have, you know, silly hobbies and we have personal lives. And so I thought it was kind of like a good introduction to say like, oh, you know, like you can take a Nobel Prize winner or you can take a PhD student and they have like, a lot of parts to their life. That was, that, that was actually the Oscar speech that I did. Mm -hmm. We're not just PhD students, we're people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, yes, to take your question. Hi. Um, so, a lot of what uh, the research is about, we, we try and find money for our research. So, my question is how did you find the money uh, for, this, uh, for this PhD movie? And is this something that you want to continue with this side? Or your actual research, that's the question. Uh, no, it's interesting. I, we've been doing these Q&As for a while, and that's, that's always in the top three questions. You know, like, A, what did your advisors think? <laughs> B, what do your parents think? <laughs> and C, how did you find the money to make this movie? Which I think says more about the audience. <laughs> Concerns. Than, uh, no, so, uh, so the movie was um, made with the support of Caltech, and paid by um, the, the websites of PhD Comics, and, which means you guys helped pay for this movie, so thank you. <laughs>
what, what were the, I mean, obviously you were limited by budget. I mean, I, I love, for instance, the opening credit sequence where you have these beautiful diagrams, these illustrative points, and things that are happening within, in the images. Um, would you like to have had more of that in the film? What were the constraints? What are the moments you think, I would like to have done that, but that was just beyond. So, I mean, as in the money people, you know, what can we expect from PhD2? <laughs> we That's had like, pizza like every day. It yeah. got really old. Like, <laughs> really old. <laughs> I wish we had better food on set, yes. <laughs> so yeah, you're not bothered about what was on screen, you're worried about the snacking. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. The snacking, yes. That was the most important thing. The free food, the free food. Are there any toppings that you couldn't afford? <laughs> uh, well, again, I, we wrote the movie having kind of work committed to the movie. I wrote the movie having kind of... So I, I, I didn't write, you know, a giant spaceship crash scene with special effects <laughs> on purpose. Um, but no, in the, I guess, in one thing we did cut out, there was a big dance number, big musical number towards the end of the movie, uh, where all the characters break out into song <laughs> about procrastination, which uh, the producer was like, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and I think it was because of budgetary reasons, I'm not sure. Alex, will you show you right now? Let's see the whole movie. <laughs> let's pass me volunteer up this place. Volunteers? Anyone? No, I'm Alex, Alex, tragedy, you're playing to an English audience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I, I found interesting is, as this is not my world at all, I mean, obviously I know some people who don't get NTs, I know, but watching it last night, I thought, I still really engage with the characters, and I still, even though this is a tremendously alien world to me, and I imagine has a little, I'm sure there were jokes which I may well have missed because they would be very specific about the world, but it was, have you found that, as you've been taking it around the US, that it's had a broader audience than you might have first imagined? Um, I think so. I mean, um, you know, just having so many people show up today, I think, um, you know, kind of made it clear to me that uh, I've been wasting my time with comics. <laughs> I should be writing movies. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was kind of the hope, was, you know, I struggled a lot with, like, what is this movie? Is it... Should I make it more like the Big Bang Theory? No, I can't do that. Or should I kind of make it, um, you know, very dorky and, or, you know, very um, obscure? Or should I try to broaden it up? Uh, so at the end, I just decided to kind of um, be as true to the comic strip as possible. Um, and to then make the story arcs and the characters very <laughs> human and believable. And so hopefully, you know, that will kind of help people access of the world. See, and Alex, I mean, you've seen some people, I, I can imagine that, as is kind of reflected in the film, some people just get trapped in that world and they're never really going to leave. What, they, they, they get caught with PhD and then it will just be this constant kind of treadmill of academia. Is, is that something you, you've seen? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's almost like if you start your PhD, they don't really give you any options of leaving academia. You know, it's not advertised, at least from what I can tell. Um, if you go into academia, you're going to get your PhD, and then you're going to go do a postdoc or two, and then you're going to go do another postdoc or two, <laughs> uh, maybe become tenure track faculty, and then you know you're 65 and you might get tenure. Um, and so I, I think that's actually a, a real shame um, that there's not other uh, careers advertised, um, and I worry that sometimes. Um, People don't, they don't value what they're doing, they don't value themselves and what they're doing because they do get this, stuck in this cycle and it's hard to, you know, just because you're from a graduate student to a postdoc doesn't mean that you feel all of a sudden that you have uh, a self-worth that you weren't given in grad school. Um, so I worry that, that when people get stuck in that cycle more, that they, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a mentality of being a grad student, you know, and, and trying to perform and I was just talking to like a young, a young professor at, at Caltech who has, was having anxiety, like a, had an anxiety disorder because he just felt like he needed to keep performing. Um, and you know, he, was, he was a professor at Caltech, you know, what, you can't really ask for a much better job and it just persists. So hopefully this gives people a little bit of a, you know, a, a chance to breathe and say, you know, life is not entirely about grad school. Do you think, Alex, that there is a, a kind of cliche about 
Yeah, I, I think some people just see science as, as being an entirely different world in which you know, crazed individuals or, or strange nerds who scurry around in the dark, that they, they are not like other humans. As you kind of said in the film, you know, as you said, you know, you're showing that they, this just, just people, it just happens that science is what they do. Do you think that is a problem? In, you know, I think both in the UK and even more so in the US, there's been a lot of anti-science <coughs> and pseudoscience and a lot of a, a, a kind of a, a attack on really very basic ideas. People don't, you know, they don't think of getting a doctor as anything other than being the medical doctor and you know they don't think that you have any purpose you know especially because we do study small questions at a time it's hard to make it seem like it has a, a purpose in society uh, but I think that I don't know we hope with, with this movie like you can show it to your parents and say you know I go through this and yet I still you know have a purpose in my life the focus now is is to sort of validate and explain and support the you know the academia experience, the experience of being a grad student, but long term I think we've talked about how, you know, there is a, there is a need for a broader impact and uh, how, you know, maybe with humor we can, we can bridge that gap. Do you think there is a, 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 I mean, an excess value beyond these values of film, which is, as you said, that people can go, see, this is my life, it really is true, this really, is. And, and, and to have created a reflection of something which is rarely shown, because normally academia, when it's shown in Hollywood, is there's an eccentric professor who's got an idea, or a man who's, a, you know, a janitor who turns out is a maths genius, which of course, as we know, is in a regular occurrence between the 21st century science. So to actually, you have created a, a level of reality, perhaps, that has, has not been seen before. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's one of the top things I always <coughs> hear from people is like, wow, I, you make me feel like I'm not the only person going through this. Um, the other main thing people ask me is like, is Cecilia single? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think, um, you know, I, I, part of what motivated me to make the comics in the movie was this idea that it's a shared experience. And so, uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad people are connecting to it. Sometimes it made me a little bit sad, something made me really, really happy. I guess that's the point of films. Make me feel sick. emotional.